Okay, I was always taught if your arse is on fire, it's always best to err on the side of caution. Now, to err is this charitable foundation that I'm going to be setting up, which is to educate the radicalised Red Bull retards. If you've seen my uh, previous video, this is the second part. The first video's got this uh, this thumbnail. And basically, it takes you through a safety car deployment back in Australia 2022, lap 23, where no cars had been lapped. The cars had spread out because they'd all started getting gaps in between them. This strip along the bottom line of the screen that you can see where you've got Leclerc, the red dot, leading the race. And then the string of competitors is spread out all the way back to Latifi, who's only just starting lap 23. But there are the gaps between all of those competitors. They're all in the correct race order. And that is, they're now all on the same lap. This is what happened at a point where Vettel had a crash and the safety car was deployed. The following lap, after the safety car was deployed, so we're on lap 23, after on lap 24, these gaps that you see of those coloured dots became that after lap, well on lap 24, on lap 25, those dots at the bottom of the screen look like this, and then the following lap on lap 26, they look like this. They all bunched, they got nose to tail, the, the incident was cleared up, the track was declared safe, and then they went racing. So as of the start of lap 27, they went racing. The rules and regulations of the sport are written so that that happens. This one, we're gonna go through what takes place when cars have been lapped. So, what better to, um, what better example to use would be one to use on um, on the safety car wiki page that I look at. It's called f1fandom.com slash wiki slash safety car. So go and check it out because then you can be as clever as I am. Um, we're looking at safety car deployment 294. The one after safety car deployment 293, which was the 2021 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. The very next deployment was the 2022 Bahrain Grand Prix. Because I know you all like saying, what about Bahrain? So we'll have a look at Bahrain. 2022 safety car. So, let's have a look. We are on lap 45, going on to lap 46. If you look at the situation on track, Charles Leclerc is a red dot at turn 14, coming up to complete his lap 45. Okay, completing lap 45. Second place is Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen is back at turn 11, so all the way down this straight around here and here. Okay, that's where Max Verstappen is. The car directly behind Leclerc on the track is this blue dot of Ocon, which means that Leclerc has lapped Ocon. Ocon is in position 12 in the race, which means that the leader has lapped every competitor up to and including 12th place. And with all 20 competitors in this race still, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cars, including Ocon, have been lapped by the leader, Leclerc. Second place car has lapped um, six, because he hasn't lapped Ocon, Mick Schumacher and Alonso. So I'm going to play this through. We're going to listen to the boys at Sky Sports F1. Old Crofty and Brundle, the same guys that commented on, commentated on the previous safety car deployment. Um, look at this grey dot of Pierre Gasly having just rounded turn one uh, and watch as it becomes stationary. Let's have a look. 
Max has just done at fastest first sector of anybody in the Grand Prix so far, which doesn't tally with we've got a box, but maybe I misunderstood that message. Very difficult to, to, to pick it out clearly, and we apologise for not being able to hear it. Uh, too quickly up here in the commentary box. Uh, the gap, 25 seconds. Here we go again with Max. Max, is the wheel heavy in both directions? So both left hand and right hand? Everywhere, everywhere. It's not even smooth. Like I have to f not even on the straight. Well, he's going to slow down because we're going to get a safety car here because Pierre Gasly's Alpha Tauri has overheated and has. Okay. So they are going to put a safety car out. Initially, they put virtual safety car and then they decide it's going to be a safety car. Gasly is off the track, but he's right next to the track. So it still, it still has some danger. Okay, and the car's on fire. I'm going to uh, show you the uh, situation uh, and I'll do it via my slideshow. And if we. Uh, Play this from the current slide. This is Gasly getting out of his flaming car, and this is what it looks like. We've got Farm and Sam there about to uh, do his thing as Gasly's getting out the car. Verstappen's on the radio there. I don't know um, whether he was just asking for a an Alpha Tauri and the sister team to break down to. Calls a safety car to help his chances in that race. I don't know. I don't know how it works for him. Um, there we go. Oh, Farmer Sam's got his hose out now. Um, starting to put that far up. But as you can see, it's precarious. It's right on the side of the track. There is no debris strewn over the track though, so it's not as though the masters have got to be on the track sweeping up on the track itself in the line of fire. In the line of fire. There he is. That that doesn't look the best to me is using a red fire extinguisher now in the UK the red fire extinguisher is water you shouldn't be using water on fires which are uh, either anywhere near electrics and um, we're told that this hybrid system is uh, high voltage and could do you uh, some harm so you wouldn't want to do to extinguish that with water and you don't really want to use water on oil based fires either that's not the best but I don't think it's Halon, that was outlawed, it should be. But anyway, let's not talk about fire safety at this moment in time. Um, what have we got here? This is the Alpha Tauri again. This is, um, this is some, they're having a chat. Um, oh, that was it, that's all the I took. Eventually, they managed to wheel this away, but it was hot and they couldn't touch it for a while. But just behind that yellow barrier, they managed to basically push it forward and then shunt it back up there behind where these guys are standing. I think actually it's behind this bit of a barrier, this gap that I'm going to wave from it in between now. And they shove it forward and then reverse it up there. So it wasn't as though it was um, had to go too far. Anyway, back to the uh, Sky Sports F1 TV. And let's have a listen to how the safety car situation unfolds. Um, we're going to look at these dots go around the track. In fact, we'll have a look at data view initially. Because data view tells us a few things. And has caught fire. The marshal straight on there with the extinguisher. But that is a very, very hot alpha. Uh, the virtual safety car has been thrown. So not, not the, uh, the safety car, the, the Mercedes safety car. You can see Gasly dropping down the field as these cars pass him, okay? So, with Ocon having gone past Gasly, Ocon's now up to 10th. He was in 11th when, we, uh, when I first showed you track of you. But it shows you that Ocon is plus one lap. He's been lapped, so that's what he's registering as being lapped on data view. Okay, so we're now on lap 46 of 57. Um, uh, the GT that will bunch up the field, but a virtual safety car that will keep the field pretty much in the stations that they were before. Now, providing this full no, safety car. No, real safety now. car. Yeah, full safety car now. Okay, full safety car now. All right. 
Daniel Ricciardo is pitted and you'll see Gasly dropping down. I'm just going to stay on the screen for a few more seconds and then we'll cut back to track a bit. So providing then uh, they, they should better press a button and get, but is the car safe? Look at these dots along the bottom line of the screen, okay? They're not in the correct race order. Because cars have been lapped, it's not like Australia 2022. This is, they're all in a mixed up order because it's not the correct race order. If to approach with the battery, is the battery in a safe uh, state to approach the car? So Leclerc being told to, to box, he is about halfway round the lap. They need to box him because those behind have just pitted already. Yeah, and it'll be a cheap stop then, won't it, for Leclerc. It'll cost him a lot less time while the others are going slowly out on track. But of course, then he needs the tyres. He needs the tyres for the restart behind the safety car. But meanwhile, it seems as if the power steering on Max Verstappen's car is giving him uh, a lot of variability in terms of the load that he's feeling. Which, if it... So you're going to go back to track of you. Where is she? They'll, they'll try and fix it as a hydraulic. Where are we? Leclerc is coming down towards turn 14. You're going to see Leclerc pit and you'll see that the red dot will deviate along this um, start finish straight and move off into the pits. You'll see that happening. Uh, there's not much chance of doing that. Pierre Gasly's night uh, coming to an early end. Real disappointment for him. And we can see, Martin, what happens through turn two we go. Yeah, it's a complete power failure look from his dash. Okay, so you saw that little red dot of Leclerc's jink and it's now registered as gone in the pits. So while Leclerc is in the pits, look at the dots of Ocon, Mick Schumacher, Sonoda, Alonso. They're the four cars now that are in between Leclerc and Verstappen. Dashboard's gone completely, so it's not an engine blow. And uh, you can't dip the clutch because you've got no power to do that with. And yeah. He's going to need, they're going to need to be careful how they approach that car to make sure it's in a safe state. It was little orange lights, wasn't there, yeah. on, the, on the indicator. No red lights on it. So Charles Leclerc did pit, as you can see, and is uh, coming back out and will retain the lead of the... OK, so Leclerc is back out on track, but those four cars, which were lapped, have unlapped themselves whilst Leclerc was in the pits. Okay, so now we've got Leclerc, Verstappen in second is the next car down the road, and then this car here is Lance Stroll. Now Lance Stroll is in 14th position. So now he is the first of the lapped cars. Gasly's out, so we've got 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, which means there are now six lapped cars. Okay. This is the way it operates. This is how you would deal with this if you were the race director of this situation. Carry it on. The race. But. But. Watch whether any of these six cars hit. That five second gap that he had is going to disappear. Yeah. The big gap between Verstappen and Sainz is going to disappear. The gap between Sainz and Perry. So, stroll pits. So from being in a position where previously, well, Stroll was behind Joe and Alonso, but now he's gone into the pits and he'll drop further behind them because he's pitted. That's his choice. Perez is going to disappear and Hamilton and Russell brought back into the equation as well because they both managed to pit. Kevin Magnussen has stayed on the medium compound tyre. Just keep checking what it's going to be. It's something is stuck or whatever. Yeah, copy. So he will not be on a new set of tyres. Ted, down to you. This just must be something that happened in the pit stop. They're not looking particularly confident about it on the Red Bull pit wall because the mechanic... So you can see now that Albon has passed Stroll due to him pitting. Came out into the box, ready to receive Max Verstappen again of course, he's gone round again, and uh, it's just have Lando Norris in for uh, another time, and the McLaren under the safety car. And so McLaren, the uh, Red Bull mechanic's gone back into the garage. So this doesn't look like something that's able to be fixed quickly in the pit. So what's happening is the safety car has been deployed, but initially the cars that the safety car has picked up 
are not that leader Leclerc. So what it does, it waves those cars by and eventually once they've been waved by and the first car that sits behind that safety car is the leader, it will then hold that leader. Crofty explains it. It's otherwise I'm sure they would have pitted him, but uh, yeah, how do these issues, I mean, you would have thought Martin perhaps hydraulics, but this, it must be something else. Latifi is now in the pits. That's uh, at that stop that initiated yeah. it. Yeah, it's going to be hydraulic. I think Norris had pitted there. It looked like his car just jinked back on the track. Where with the power steering. And now finally with the safety car then picks up the leader of the Grand Prix. And, <laughs> Best to uh, put the brakes on. Yeah, so well, normally with now with Max's straight line speed, you would say he's sitting there on the restart. There will. So it should be now, Leclerc is behind the safety car. You should see all these cars now are bunching. It'll be a restart, uh, as we're so far from the end of the Grand Prix. You'd normally say Max is sitting in the pound seat now in with a great chance here, but if he's carrying power steering issues, maybe not. But let's see him. Yeah. He didn't seem to slow him down too much on the previous lap. He's only just fighting the car a bit. So Magnussen makes his pit stop as well. So that puts him on a, a fresher set of tyres. So he's not at a disadvantage at the start. So the field will now bunch up behind the safety car. Burnt Mylander once again at the wheel of the safety car. James Crofty, the field will now bunch up behind the safety car. Car. When they're all bunched up and when Pierre Gasly's car, the only car to retire from this race so far, and we're on lap 47, when that car is cleared away. Okay, mate. How rude, they interrupt the explanation with a, a Red Bull interjection. So, steering update. We are staying out. Uh, we don't believe it's a reliability concern at this stage. Um, we can go through it a bit later. So you're just going to have to put up with it, old chap, I think is the message there from the Red Bull pit wall. Ten laps to go. Once the field are all bunched up, then Gasly's Alpha Tauri is cleared, then all the lapped cars can unlap themselves. And the regulations... So, when the field is bunched up and the Alpha Tauri is cleared, so when it's safe to do so, then all of the lap cars have to unlap. Okay? You've, you've made a point there, Crofty. Let's. Uh... Have been changed since Abu Dhabi for obvious reasons. Gazi's Alpha Tauri is cleared, then all the lapped cars can unlap themselves and the regulations have been changed since Abu Dhabi for obvious reasons. Well, because um, you're making out that, you know, that was the problem. These were the regulations in uh, Abu Dhabi. There was no problem because it says that uh, if the clerk of the course considers it safe to do so, so this is with Gasly's car out of the way, the being no debris on the track, no danger to any of the marshals that are still in the firing line on the edges of that track, okay? No damage to barriers, that's all being checked and it was all okay. No crane on the track. So once that's all been sorted and it's safe to do so, and the message gets sent to the competitors, any car that's been lapped by the leader will be required to pass the cars on the lead lap. So. You, are you going to pick and choose which are required? If it's required, you have to do it. Any car, so any car that's been lapped by the leader has to pass. But what it is, is any car that qualifies, it's any car that doesn't get itself lapped after the safety car has passed the safety car line for the second time. That's how it works. It's not that difficult. Martin's going to try and claim to you that it's really hard, but it's not. Just follow that explanation. It really isn't rocket science, kids. As long as you don't get yourself lapped. You've just seen three or four cars unlap themselves when Leclerc pitted. Okay? Now, after that safety car has been on, on track for two laps, if you get yourself pitted, uh, lap, if you get yourself lapped now, you don't get to unlap you've been rather foolish or extremely unlucky in having to pit whilst that safety car snake then came around and went past you whilst you were in the pits. 
And if that was the case, you don't get to unlap. Which is why teams really will try and avoid that at all costs. It's only if it's an emergency situation that's extremely unfortunate that that will ever happen. But you don't get to unlap then. Every other time, you get to unlap. It's not hard. But what they try to do, they try to make it hard. They try to make it so that you don't understand it. Why would people try to confuse you needlessly? Why would they try to make it sound harder than it actually is? Is it so that they can get away with trying to confuse people? And so that you all come out arguing something you think you know, which you don't because you've been lied to about it? So that all lap cars will now be able to unlap themselves. Come on, the sexy car needs to go quicker in the straight. Need to... So Albond now pitted and Stroll repasses him. Okay, but he was already lapped. So all he's done is lost position between himself and Stroll. But these guys, as I say, because Stroll pitted, he lost ground on the car competitor that was ahead of him prior to the um, incident, prior to Gasly retiring, which is Joe in 13th. Now, if you go back to how far Stroll was behind the car in front of him, as and when the incident took place, Stroll was about 17 seconds behind that competitor that was in front of him. So when we restart, we'll see what happens there. It gives him a big disadvantage by going slow like this. Copy that. Yeah, but not here, because there's a car and there's marshals by the side of the track. Uh, Karun, down to you. Yeah, just to clarify, um, Crofty, I was listening back and forth on the radio traffic between Verstappen and the pit wall. And let's be clear, he came out and said, Initially, something was completely wrong. As we see, oh, look at that, Leclerc getting very close to the safety car there, clearly expecting it to be quicker down straight. Um, he then talked about the inconsistencies in it, but now, as we've just heard, GP has clarified it isn't a reliability concern. I was looking at the, the sector times, and as Verstappen was complaining a lot on... And how long will they wait? Uh... Will they let the lap cars through? I don't think it's mandatory, but that's usually on a wet day in Spa. And if they do, how long will they wait? On that out lap, he did the fastest final sector of anybody. What jeopardy? Are we going to see any more racing? So, clearly, it wasn't a car stopper or something that he thought he had to bring back into the pits. Thanks, Karun. So, the cars that have been lapped, Albon and Stroll, Ricardo and Norris, Latifi and Hulkenberg, that's six. That's all six. Not just five of eight. All six, six out of six. Well done, guys. Such an improvement in just one event. And if anyone at Race Control uh, needs a bit of help, hopefully they're listening, that's six race. So now it's a commentary team that also got it wrong in Abu Dhabi. They're able to help race control. Uh, lapped cars uh, this evening. Yeah, not, uh, we haven't seen anything even approach the Gasly car yet, have we, to, to clear it away? Hopefully that's happening quickly. He's right near, uh, obviously, a service road, so they haven't got too far to go with it. From, as soon as they can lift it up. No, it's not going anywhere, is it? No, it's uh, still smoking away. Very hot indeed. If you're just joining us here in Bahrain, uh, we are behind the safety car uh, because of Pierre Gasly's Alpha Tari catching fire. If you've missed the action so far, if you're a Skyglass, SkyQ customer, uh, press your red button. You can watch highlights of the race alongside the live action and hopefully we'll, we will get some live action to the flag because there is a tantalising restart in prospect coming up for about three or four laps, I think, Martin here. And of course that... Almost uh, exactly where Roman Grosjean went yeah. through the fence, isn't it? Oh, that rather fiery crash. And uh, so electric, it looks like electric issues, doesn't it? There for the Alpha with the dash just going out like that. Oh, you can also say maybe it's turbo at the top end of the engine, but there's no smoke coming out of the exhaust pipe. So it looks, it looks electrical, but the clutch release has to work for up to 15 minutes, a little button you press so they can roll the car away but they which they're now doing they're now doing exactly that 
they've got horrible steering lock on them, especially with these uh, tyres on the front. But um, as they seven point turn that to get it down the service Absolutely. road, we will be underway then. George Russell picked up three places uh, during that uh, during the safety car period as well by uh, by getting a, a cheaper pit stop. So that's put him into the uh, the top six. And there's a lot of there's a lot of cars that are going to really fancy their chances when we get racing. Here. Yeah, and look at young Mick, Mick Schumacher up into the points as well. Yeah, it's more and more difficult to steer with speed. Copy that, Max. Yeah, because the aero load obviously builds yeah. up dramatically. Ted, what can you tell us? Oh, I don't know, Martin. I'm just getting my nerves back after all this talk about safety cars and unlapping cars. Not again, Crofter. You're giving well, me flashbacks. Ted, lapped car. OK, so we've just started to see the move from Stroll. Bearing in mind the incident was about turn three-ish is where Gasly's car set fire. And they've, they've actually pushed that out of the way behind the barrier now. You've got Stroll released and there's Albon, Ricardo, Norris, Latifi and Hulkenberg that will need to be released. So them cars have all been bunched. Hulkenberg being the last one is, where is he? He's in an Aston Martin, so he's here. This dark green one here just before turn 10. We'll see those six cars get released now. Cars may now overtake oh, no, the safety don't, don't, car. Don't start with that. And, and guess what, Ted? There are six of them. I, you've you've counted properly. <laughs> I'm traumatized. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. I've only just got over it. 14 weeks. I've only just got over it. Anyway, let's move 98 on. 98 days, Ted. That's all it's been. <laughs> right. uh, Mick Schumacher. So he has stayed out, as Martin uh, uh, correctly observes, stayed out. So The world will never get over it. And the reason we'll never get over it is because we're going to use it as an example forever as to what was done. This is going to be taught in schools. We're going to use this as an example of how things have been manipulated and how the world was sold a lie, a contrived lie. Not done an extra stop, whereas pretty much everybody else has, is already on 13 lap old soft tyres. So it's a brave move from the Haas guys. Both cars, both Haas cars at the moment. So what do we know about the safety car rules? What do we know? We are on lap 49. What do we know? That once the last lapped car has passed the leader in the safety car, the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. Let's just double check that. You know, I you know, might have not got it right word for word. Okay, having overtaken the cars on the lead lap and the safety car, these cars should then proceed around the track at appropriate speed without overtaking and make every effort to take the position at the back of the line of cars behind the safety car. Whilst they are overtaking and in order to ensure this may be carried out safely, the cars on the lead lap must always stay on the racing line unless deviating from it is unavoidable. Unless the clerk of the course considers the presence of the safety car still necessary, once the last lapped car has passed the leader, the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. So what are we expecting to see? We are expecting to see the safety car stay on, on track. In the po oh, and it's ending, and it's ending. Wow. Points. So he is going to come under pressure, Team Radio. Two seconds, Ted. Max, from what we can see, the situation is stable. So nothing's getting worse, but uh, it is what it is. I think all of the... Um, all of the teams are giving the message to their driver. Safety car in this lap. It is. But it's not we getting better. With it. If it becomes undrivable, then. Because that's never happened before. Ever. Obviously, you know the situation. Well, I hope that means retire the car. Yeah. So, what do we think he's just going to have to be muscle man to, uh, to get it round? And they're about to go racing. And they're about to go racing. What jeopardy! And the last few laps, in, in any case, yeah. So Mick Schumacher has having a go. They stayed out. They've got track position ahead of Yuki Tsunoda and Fernando Alonso. But both those drivers on new or new-ish tyres. So yeah, it's gonna. Oh no, they're not. Safety car staying out on track, complying with the regulations this time. It'll be uh, uh, some uh, tall order for Mick Schumacher to hang on to that P10, but he's going to give it a go. So presumably the safety car is in at the end of this lap. Uh, you You'd presume that, wouldn't you, Martin? You'd presume that. You know, you, you, you'd presume that rather than ask the audience, you know, like, who wants to be a millionaire? You know, use one of your lifelines and ask the audience, 
how long will they wait? Presumably, you know, it'll be at the end of this lap. But you didn't presume that in Abu Dhabi, did you? You didn't presume that. This man that's been the commentator of the sport for 28 years didn't presume that in Abu Dhabi. A bit strange, that is, Brundle. Max Verstappen needs his inner Nigel Mansell now, and yeah. I think there's plenty of Nigel Mansell in Max Verstappen when it comes to cranking a bit of steering wheel on. Could be right. Who uh, are? Right uh, it's, uh, you know, when it starts loading the aero up uh, through some of these high speed turns, like turn 12 or into turn 14 at the end of the lap, for example. Safety car is indeed in this lap. That rule didn't change. Uh, it is at the end of the next lap after the lap runners. And by the way, calculating. Oh, oh that rule didn't change. That rule didn't change. But you, you didn't talk about that rule in Abu Dhabi. You lied about that rule in Abu Dhabi before it happened. You asked the audience, how long will they wait? Rather than say, well, the, the, the rule is that the safety car's got to stay on track for another lap. But that makes the safety car period... No, it doesn't make the safety car period longer, Martin. That's just what it is. That's the, the rules. Let's just see what Martin says again, because Martin's always right. It's, uh, you know, when it starts loading the aero up uh, through some of these high-speed turns, like turn 12 or into turn 14 at the end of the lap, for example. Safety car is indeed in this lap. That rule didn't change. Uh, it is at the end of the next lap after the lap runners. And by the way, calculating who are the lap runners is not the work of a moment. It's rather complex, especially when you read the regulation. Uh, yes. Um, especially, like, that's it, kids. This is too complex for you, especially when you read the regulation. You won't be able to handle this. It's too complex for you. Or you can just believe me when I've just told you how to do it. You can either believe somebody that just simplifies it and tells you exactly what it is, or you can let Martin confuse you. Just believe Martin and go, oh yeah, none of us will ever understand this because Martin's told us it's so complicated. So we'll just believe Martin and just, just accept that it's just too hard for us. Or you can just learn. It's quite easy, isn't it? Not hard. Uh, it is, and we'll all be automated uh, in the future. Uh, where I say, uh, I hope Max Verstappen retires the car. What a That's right, everything will be automated. Then you won't even have to worry your little heads, kids. You won't have to worry your little heads. It'll all be sorted for you. Don't worry, we'll do it all. We'll get it right for you, and you can just enjoy it. It's fine. Is, I hope he doesn't carry on driving it when it's uh, it's not in a very stable condition to do so. Charles Leclerc might have been thinking about a first win in Bahrain. Uh, he's now still in the position that he's been in for the whole race where he's leading the race, but he has got them queuing up right behind him. Max Verstappen, Carlos Sainz, Sergio Perez, Lewis Hamilton, George Russell, Kevin Magnussen all going to be going for it uh, right at the start here. Bernd Mylander will peel into the pits in a few corners time and we can get racing again. There's so many stories to this restart. Two Mercedes nose to tail. Look at that. Perez on Sainz, Verstappen on Le Leclerc. Maybe Sainz on Verstappen as well if he's struggling to turn the steering wheel. Exactly. We were 11 laps away from this becoming the first season opening race ever to be completed without a single retirement. And then Pierre Gasly's Alpha Tauri caught fire. And now the action is going to hot up here in Bahrain once again. So they have to back up a little bit now and uh, Leclerc becomes effectively the safety car because they've got to let it get far enough out front to be in the pit lane before he bolts and he will be trying to catch Max Verstappen out big time. No drag reduction system, of course, for two laps after a safety car. And this is Max's favorite trick, isn't it? Yep. Trying to hustle the guy who's uh, about it. And uh, he's left himself very tight on that last corner, actually. Okay, so they go racing again on lap 51. What we saw was Charles Leclerc pretty much starting his lap 46 when the Gasly incident took place. So, lap 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 5, 
four laps of that race were lost due to a safety incident. Five laps. That car didn't crash. It didn't damage a barrier that needed to be checked. It didn't spew debris onto the track which needed sweeping off. They didn't have to fetch a crane to lift that car away. They didn't have to sweep away the powder from a fire extinguisher. They had to put a car, the, the, the flames out and they had to push it behind a barrier. That took five laps. In Abu Dhabi, with the extra complications of the debris being on track, having to get a crane out there and double check the barrier, that got restarted illegally within four and a half. That should have taken longer than this. There were only five and a half laps remaining in Abu Dhabi. Now, look at the position of those released cars when the race resumes. They haven't caught up. They're in the correct race order, but those six competitors have been left stranded back. Now, is that fair? And the answer is no. The answer is no. Let's be fair about this. The, the answer is no. Stroll has not got the same chance of catching Joe that Joe has of catching Alonso in front of him. Now, why have race control made this decision? The way the regulations are worded, you have to afford those release cars the minimum of one lap, which is what has been done. What I've, I've witnessed in every safety car deployment where lapped cars were in, involved between 2012 and 2021, the release cars got back within a time difference of that pack that they were previously within on. So for example, Stroll was 17 seconds behind the car that he was previously behind. So the race would not be restarted until Stroll was within that, that time margin again. That appeared to be Charlie Whiting's way of applying sporting fairness and that seemed to be passed on to Michael Massey whereby Massey on four occasions rather than restart the race with those six cars stranded still he would have kept that safety car on track for a further lap to enable those six release cars the chance of getting all the way back to the back of the pack so all 19 cars were lined up nose to tail. This was a different race director for 2022. Massey had been sacked by then, had been gagged. So they're doing things slightly different. They're doing it to the letter of the regulation, but they're not necessarily factoring in sporting fairness to every competitor. However, what they may do. I can't give you a definitive answer on this because I don't know the thought process behind their decision making. I'm just trying to apply what is going on. So they've given them the mandatory one lap, which means that they technically can go racing. They've not given the same sporting chance to these six competitors in the fact that they've not allowed them to fully catch. But have they applied the notion that Stroll and Albon both pitted and Ricardo and I believe Norris um, in fact I believe all six of those cars I might be wrong but we can double check pitted under safety car hence dropping themselves further back Stroll pitted dropping himself further behind Joe so in that case if you're lapped and you drop yourself further back, does that mean that they will say, well, you caused part of that yourself, you put yourself in that position, in a race position, so therefore, you know, you, we're not going to allow you to fully catch, we're just going to let the, the mandatory part of the regulation play out. What we don't know is, had Stroll have not have pitted, would they have ensured that he wouldn't have lost that ground? 
don't know, speculation. Have the FIA broken their own rules again in that race? Because they've not applied sporting fairness to every competitor. Which way are they interpreting that one? But what they've not done, they've not broken the regulation. And that's what they did in Abu Dhabi. And by breaking that regulation, they set it up for a competitor to win that event. When that event should have clearly finished behind the safety car. So what we'll do, we'll go through the examples in between 2012 and 2021 because they were the ones that set the precedent. 2022 was doing things after the event to retrospect, almost retrospectively validate what took place in Abu Dhabi. And that's the problem, is that the things that took place in 2022 and 2023 will be done with a bit of a skew to go, oh yeah, well that that makes Abu Dhabi okay, doesn't it? No, no it doesn't. Just because you're doing things slightly different or you've got a different slant on things now, never validates that. You, You did things differently to how you'd ever done them there before in Abu Dhabi. Totally wrong, totally broke the rules, as evidence, this here is in accordance with the regulation. They didn't do that mandatory safety car lap that they've just done here. They didn't do that in Abu Dhabi. All of the reports, all of the media, what are they saying about that? Who, who is exposing that, that, by not doing that, that changed the outcome of the World Championship? This is the problem. This is the problem. And it's a systematic thing. It's sport-wide. F1 TV got you to believe that it was possible to go racing. Brundle and Crofty lied to you in Abu Dhabi with everything they were speculating. They didn't calmly tell you, you need to release the lap cars, all eight of them. They told you that you had to release the six lap cars here, as if it was somehow different to Abu Dhabi, which it wasn't. They told you that Martin presumed that the safety car would be coming in at the end of this lap because the safety car has to do a lap beyond the lap that those lap cars are released on. Didn't tell you that in Abu Dhabi. He asked you what you think in the comment section. He asked the audience, didn't he? Oh, Martin, the expert. That's a bit strange, do you not think? I think it's a bit strange that the expert there to tell the global audience what is happening asks you for the answer. Ask the Drive to Survive strap on band what they think the answer should be. They don't know, Martin. They don't know. They're thinking with their desires. They just want to see what they want to see. Doesn't mean they can give you the right answer. They're not going to be of any assistance to you. They're going to get you the answer to that question wrong, Martin. Okay? Don't don't use that lifeline, Martin. Don't use that one. If you'd phone me, if you'd phone a friend, I'd have got it right for you. But never mind. We're not friends, so you wouldn't have phoned me. Anyway, that'll do for this one. Um, Until the next time. There might be more educational material in the near future. Happy New Year.